What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today it's time to continue my Halloween review series. We're getting ready for Halloween Kills coming out this Friday and today it's time for Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This is definitely the biggest outlier in the entire franchise because it has absolutely nothing to do with Michael Myers. This movie doesn't belong in the Halloween franchise and that is the main reason in my opinion why people hate this movie. People don't like it because they thought they were getting a Michael Myers movie. They go to the movies that has nothing to do with Michael Myers, that has nothing to do with the Halloween franchise as they know it. They're like, what is this crap? And even growing up for me, I used to skip it. I used to skip this movie. I didn't even bother with it. I would watch Halloween 1, Halloween 2, skip Halloween 4, and so on. But I loved the Halloween franchise, but I knew that this had nothing to do with Michael Myers. And to be honest, the cover wasn't that appealing. I had the movie on VHS tape, but I just couldn't make myself watch it. I just didn't want to watch it. I was like... Maybe I should finally watch this. Ah, fuck that. Halloween 4. Until like, I think I was maybe already an adult, maybe 17, 18, when I finally watched it for the first time, not knowing what to expect. I'm like, let, let me just throw it on. Let's just, 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 just watch it. We have to at least watch it. I understand this has nothing to do with the rest of the franchise, but let's check it out. So I put in that tape. And I was like, whoa. But you have to be in the mindset that I'm going to enjoy this movie and I'm not going to think about a Halloween franchise. I'm just going to relax, watch this film like it's just forget that it's called Halloween 3. Just think that it's called Season of the Witch and enjoy. Because this movie is crazy as hell. But as far as, in my personal opinion, entertaining as freak. I actually love this movie. I do. You got to get out of the mindset of Halloween because the way they marketed this movie and they did, you know, the way that they just kind of implied that Michael Myers would be in it or they didn't tell people straight up. Um, obviously, they called it Halloween 3 for money. Ching, 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 ching. That's all that that was about. It was a studio decision. If they had said, okay, we're going to have a new Halloween movie every single year. We're starting this anthology, which is what they were doing. Uh, Michael, uh, John Carpenter and uh, so on. They were doing that. Well, they should have gone ahead and try to let people know about that this that the Michael Myers story has been told which I thought it had been told great through the, um, the Halloween 1 and Halloween 2 awesome there was really nowhere else to go with the Michael Myers story without making it a bit unrealistic because he got blown up along with Dr. Loomis now they brought them back anyway for Halloween 4 and just gave Loomis some scars and it was just like okay we're doing this okay we're doing this but I would have really preferred they continued to do this because who knows what kind of great movies they would have come up with because as far as I'm concerned Halloween 3 and I'm going to get into the review right now uh, was a, and is a really fun film and it stars Tom Atkins as Daniel and he's a doctor who has a uh, relationship with his ex-wife is not good there that's why it's his ex-wife I guess and he's got two kids who are really cute and they put on the mask and it's, it's a funny scene when they get the mask and they start singing this song by the way the song in this movie is just the catchiest thing ever and the score in this movie it's amazing it fits it it's got a spooky vibe like a creepy vibe but it's also got this Halloween 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 but all that aside the way that this movie kicked off is really what grabbed me like I didn't know what to expect but I thought that this movie nothing in the poster you know, you, they say you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, this movie is a prime example because I thought I, I didn't see anything special. I thought, what is it about people going trick or treating? What's going to happen here? I have no idea. Um, but wow. And, and the opening scene where has this guy just running. You don't know what he's running from. And he's like, oh, he's freaking out. You know, he gets to the gas station attendant and then he uh, ends up in the hospital. It's, they're going to kill us all. He's clutching on this mask. You know that there's some mystery here. There's something that they're going to unveil. Uh, un, un, uh, they're going to reveal in this in this movie. That's going to be just, whoa, it's going to be mind-blowing. It's got to be, right? Otherwise, the movie's not going to be good. But I'm here to tell you, it is mind-blowing. Every single new plot point that's revealed, you're like, holy shit. And Tom Atkins is the main character. I know a lot of people have really criticized that part of the movie because he's not your typical hero. He's he's kind of a he's kind of a jerk. I mean, he, he's, he's going around chasing this girl, which is the only reason or the primary reason that he's even going with her and then and because that was her father that was killed at the beginning so her father died ended up dying and in a really mysterious way because the guy that killed him who looks like some kind of a matrix agent this is before the matrix was made so you know he's he's a freaking matrix agent and he goes he kills him by in the most insane way 
a, a kill that I've never seen before or since in any horror film, or any film for that for that matter that I can remember. He kills him, and then he goes out to his car, or a car, sits in there, dumps gasoline all over himself, lights a match, and he does it with a straight face the whole time. Like, is this even a human? Is this a robot? What is going on here? What, what is that? What in the hell is going on? And so the guy who died, her, his uh, his daughter, she wants to find out what's going on. So she's going to go investigate and going to gonna go to this town where this warehouse is that makes these masks. One of the masks that he was clutching on that he actually sold in a shop that he ran. And uh, she was able to do some investigative work and find out that they needed to go to this town and find out what's going on because something's up with these masks. And, you know, Tom Atkins' character... He goes, hey, he said, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to help you. Now, maybe he did have some curiosity because he witnessed that whole thing. The guy died in front of you know, the, the guy that he was caring for died. And then he went and saw this, you know, Matrix agent uh, blow himself up. So I do believe that he had some curiosity and he wanted to find out what was going on. But the main reason he went with her is because he was trying to get some. He was attracted to her and he is kind of a little sleazy in a way, the way he talks to her and the way he kind of, he, he's, he's a nice guy. I mean, he's not a complete sleaze ball, but he's a nice guy. But you can tell he was he was trying to get some, and he did. But he's actually like a normal dude. His appearance, the way he talks, the way he acts, he's not a superhero. He's a good guy. He's a doctor. He cares about his kids, but he's not going to go over the top. You know, he's not the best dad. He's not the worst dad. He's a normal dude, which kind of is different. And I thought made for a pretty interesting movie and an interesting protagonist, especially because as he learns more about what's going on, he gets more invested in it. Yeah, he first started to to go with this girl mainly because he was trying to get some, I, I like I said. But eventually, as he discovers more about what's going on and some of the horrible things that are happening with these masks, which are just insane, he obviously wants to do the right thing and save a bunch of kids from dying. This tragic thing that's about to happen. I won't spoil everything just in case you haven't seen it because you should see it. I even think this movie's a little ahead of its time. I mean, this was 1981? Early 80s maybe was filmed in 1980? I mean, we're talking 40 years ago. And, you know, there are microchips in this movie. It's all kind of like technical, technological things that you would think, you know, we wouldn't see these kind of movies until the 2000s. So it, it really is interesting. Some of the effects have aged a little bit, but for the most part, the effects were actually practical and they were freaking amazing. And this movie just has a, a spooky vibe. It does have some camp to it. I mean, it's not a all serious movie, which is probably good because there are some things that happen here which would be horrific in a serious movie and something you would just get turned off by. But because it's a little bit of a, a campy horror film at times, it's not as offensive when, you know, some terrible things happen to children, for instance. You know, it's not something you would normally want to see. But in this film, they're able to pull it off somehow without it being absolutely horrifying. It is horrifying because it's a horror film, but not horrifying to the point you're like, oh my God, what am I watching? Turn this off. It's disgusting. I never felt that way about it. I felt it was just like a, just an amazing horror movie. I mean, this was really, I was just blown away, to be honest. The main thing to criticize is the fact that they called it Halloween 3. I shouldn't even be doing this review for this review series because it shouldn't be a Halloween movie. It should be on its own. It should be called Season of the Witch or Silver Shamrock or something like that. But I thought that this film was just really fun. I, I just don't, I'm never bored. I'm always intrigued. I'm always you know into this story every time I watch it. And uh, the ending, I thought the last scene was just freaking awesome. It was just freaking awesome. And I and again, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm just going to say that the way that this film ended is not your typical happy ending. You know, killed the bad guy, good guy and good girl live. You know, a lot of people died, of course, but, you know, it ends up happening. No, this movie is just crazy as hell. This movie, I think if it got released just called Season of the Witch, would have been an absolute hit. To this day, they probably would have spawned a bunch of sequels. It would have spawned a bunch of sequels, Season of the Witch 2, Season of the Witch 3. But the studio was so greedy that they marketed it as a Halloween movie. And now they're stuck with this random Halloween movie that has nothing to do with Michael Myers. They could have had, they could have made millions off of just the name Season of the Witch. And we'd be talking, we'd be doing our Season of the Witch series review. At least that's what I think, because I really enjoyed this movie. If you have not seen Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, check it out. Now, be, be warned, this is a love it or hate it type movie. A lot of people despise this movie. But in my opinion, while I'd say it's not quite a masterpiece, this movie is freaking awesome. A true 
masterpiece should be just beloved. Everyone should recognize that. But you actually have a lot of people who think this movie is complete trash. So it's hard to say a movie that half the population who have seen it or more think it's trash could possibly be a masterpiece. A masterpiece should appeal to pretty much everyone. But again, I think that the main reason was the title. And when you screw up the title, well, you're not really, you, I can't call it a masterpiece if you screwed up the title and the marketing. That's part of you, you know, the presentation of this movie. So I will say it's freaking awesome. Not quite masterpiece, but I really enjoy it. This is one of my favorites in the franchise, even though it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. So I would uh, definitely suggest checking it out. Thank you so much for checking this out. Please let me know what you thought of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. If I'm way off base here, you think it sucked, it's horrible, worst of the franchise. Hey, I, I can't imagine it's any worse than Resurrection, but hey, your opinion is, is your opinion. So let me know down below and be ready for more Halloween reviews. I'm going to do as many as I can up until the release of Halloween Kills. Then I'll review Halloween Kills and then I'll continue the Halloween review series after that. Have a great day!